Good evening. I uh, appreciate you joining us for our Sunday evening service. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God's blessing be upon the service. And, and uh, we want to thank the Lord for being with us this morning. Thank the Lord for His presence. And um, that's, uh, that's what it's all about, is the Lord manifesting His presence with us and, and uh, His name being glorified and honored and and that's the only way we can uh, we can ever be helped is through His Spirit and His presence. Um, let's continue to remember all the requests that was mentioned this morning. Uh, let's remember Travis Hensley's uh, grandmother. Um, let's remember uh, uh, Julie Hensley. Let's continue to remember her. She has her surgery this week up in Philadelphia on Thursday. They'll be going up on Tuesday. So well, let's remember her um, and her family. Uh, let's also remember uh, George Laws. Is, uh, he'll be going to Duke uh, Hospital this week. And uh, let's pray that uh, they help him and figure out what to uh, do about his heart there. So let's remember that. And uh, let's remember all these others that... Uh, uh, has sicknesses and different things going on. Let's pray, pray one for another. Let's pray also for those that has COVID, and uh, as far as I know, everybody's getting better, and uh, that we know of, and and uh, so thank the Lord for that. I believe the numbers are continually to uh, decrease in in our county, so uh, we look forward to uh, being back in in person. Uh, February the 14th, and so we look forward to that. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight, God, for your grace and your strength and your help. And Lord, as David said, I look into the hills which cometh my help, and my help cometh from the Lord. And we just pray that, Lord, that you just meet each and all all these needs, God, Lord, that's, that's uh, requested. I pray, God, that you would just... Uh, uh, meet each and every need, Lord, that uh, whatever it may be, whether it uh, be uh, 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 salvation, whether it be physical or uh, spiritual or, or financial, in every need, we just pray you will have your way and your will, Lord, we pray. Pray, Lord, that you bless the service tonight. Everything that's said and done, bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's sing. How we made the lame to 
loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so little ones to him belong they are weak but he is strong yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me the Bible tells me so. God made me, God made me. I'm so glad that God made me. God made my fingers, God made my toes. God made my knuckles and God made my nose. God made my hip bones and God made my chin. And God made the shape that I am in. God made me, God made me. I'm so glad that God made me. Good job. Amen. Thank the Lord tonight for song that's been sung all day just been wonderful and all right uh turn with us in first corinthians chapter number one we'll go there uh, first and then we'll uh, go on to genesis i'll be going to genesis chapter number 11 a little bit there so um first corinthians chapter number one in verse in verse number um, 17, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of, of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made the foolish, uh, made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, of the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the, for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks uh, seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified under the Jews a stumbling block under the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has, made the, God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world, and the things uh, which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness, and sanctification and redemption. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, 
let him glory in the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the reading of your word tonight. And God, we just pray that your name will be glorified and honored tonight. And I pray, Lord, that you just give us, get us out of the way. And Lord, that your name, God, will be lifted up tonight. And we just pray that you just give us every word. We thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I begin to think tonight about uh, uh, how that uh, the scripture here speaking about the how that uh, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to them that are saved it is the power of God. Now notice verse nineteen. It says, "For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing." The understanding of the prudent. Bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Now you think about uh, uh, what it goes on to say here. It says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made the foolish, made foolish the wisdom of the world? For after the, that in the wisdom of the world, God... Uh, wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believed. Uh, for the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, unto the uh, uh, Greeks a foolishness, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, but the, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. I begin to think about how God, uh, 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 by the foolishness of preaching, confounded the, the wise. And that word confounded tonight uh, uh, means this. It means uh, uh, to pour out, to throw together, to mingle, blend different things so that their forms or natures cannot uh, be distinguished uh, to mix or, or, or crowd, uh, to throw or disorder. And uh, I, I thought about this. I thought about in, in Genesis chapter number 11, how when God confounded the, the language there. The Bible says in Galatians, or excuse me, Genesis chapter number 11, verse number 1, it says, And the whole world was of one language and of one speech. And this is what happened. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go and let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had, uh, uh, had brick for stone and slime for, uh, had they for mortar. And they said, uh, Go Go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven. And let us make a name, lest we scatter abroad upon the face of the whole world, uh, uh, whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. This they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us uh, go down, and, con and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore it is the na uh, name of it called Babel because the Lord did there confound the language of the, all the earth and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Now I thought about how that, that man, uh, the arrogance of man was, was just uh, 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 growing more and more each day there and how that they thought that they was just going to build a uh, they were going to build a, a, a tower, and they they thought that the, the heaven heaven was above 
the earth pretty close there in the sky and they, they thought they could just build a, a tower to reach them into heaven and, and, and be as, as gods and, and have the same authority as God. And, and uh, I thought about how that, the Lord knew uh, their intent and uh, the Lord knew how to, uh, to humble them and knew how to, how to keep them humble. So the Lord confounded the language there. And that's, that's how that we have many different languages from that day on. How that there's many languages spoken in the world today. And that goes right back to Genesis chapter number 11. Where God confounded the language uh, there because they were... They were uh, the, their intent uh, uh, was to uh, become as God or greater than God in how that they, they had uh, so many different, uh, no doubt, uh, uh, goals in there that they wanted to do. But, but God knew that and God confounded their language so that, uh, and I, I thought about this, God knows how to keep us humble. God knows how to keep us uh, that there's a lot of things in life that that man tries to understand, that man tries to control, but God is control of it all. And I believe God, even in our life, God knows how to to keep us humble. God knows how to uh, to uh, use us for His glory and His honor. I thought about that there about the about the foolishness of preaching. There to confound the wise. It's for, for you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen Yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. And I thought of this tonight. God is going to bring things to naught. And let me say tonight, preaching brings things to naught. Preaching of the cross brings things to naught. You think about how that the, the Spirit of God, amen, uh, the Bible says holy men of God spake as they were moved to the Holy Ghost. That's how we have the Word of God. Amen. And the Word of God brings things to naught. Amen. The, the, the Word of God is our standard. The Word of God is truth. And the truth will set us free tonight if we'll accept the truth. And, and I begin to think about how that God uh, uses uh, the Word of God in, and, and the, 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 to the world the, the preaching of the cross is foolishness. But I like that part where it says, but to them that are saved, it is the power of it is it's verse number uh, in verse number uh, verse number eighteen. And to us which are saved, it is the power of God. I'm glad tonight that that we have the power tonight. Amen. I, I, as I mentioned this morning, not that we're sufficient to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, and we have the power tonight. We have the power to overcome. We have the power to stand tonight but, uh, on the authority of the Word of God. And I, I thought about how that the Lord has chosen the weak things. And God has chosen the foolish things of the world to, to confound the wise. And you think, I, I thought about this. Uh, when the Lord was even calling me to preach, I thought, Lord, I'm so inadequate. And I kind of felt like Moses. Moses said, Lord, I can't even uh, talk plain. I, 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 I'm not a very good speaker. But how the Lord, uh, I, I, the Lord, uh, he, his anger was a little kindled against Moses. And he was saying, well, I'm, I'll be your speaker for you. But how the, the Lord had mercy there, and he, he, uh, he uh, uh, made Aaron his speaker there. But the Lord always make a way. He makes a way for us. He made if we'll just be willing, if we'll just be obedient. And I thought about different things down through the Word of God, how God chose little simple things to get the Word across. I thought about how that he took that little boy's lunch that day, two little fish and five loaves of bread. The Bible, well, the Bible says the, the, the first or the the disciple even said said there's a lad here 
that has two fish and five loaves of bread, but what are they among so many? That was his question. But what are they among so many? What, what good is this little lunch going to do to feed all these people, he was saying. But God took that little lunch and he fed over 5,000 people. 5,000 people beside uh, women and children, right? Now you think about that. 5,000, so if every man had a wife, all right, that was 10,000. If they had at least one youngin', that's 15,000. And probably they had more children than just one. Now you think about that. Two little fish and five loaves of bread, but what are they among so many? God said, let me have it. And he took it and he blessed it. See, that's the key. God blessed that little part. And that little part that looked so foolish, and it was so foolish to the, to the disciple, how in the world can these, this little lunch feed all these people? But God blessed it, and that's why it fed all them people. Let me say tonight, little is much when God is in it. Hey Amen. You may feel like you're so inadequate and, and that, that you have little to give, but you give your little part. Hey Amen. And God will bless it. Hey Amen. I think about when, when, uh, uh, when, when I came to terms with it that, that I couldn't get around the calling to preach and I tried to compromise and or I tried to, I, I guess you'd say, uh, 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 I, I tried to uh, uh, deal with God. Say, Lord, I, I I'll be a I'll be a song leader. I'll be I'll be a, a Sunday school teacher. Lord, I'll be a deacon for you. And I even said, I said, Lord, I'll do it all if you'll just let me do that. But but the the calling, the gifts and callings of God is without repentance. The Bible says. So when God is telling you to do something. Uh, uh, listen, we need to remember what God is calling you to do. The Bible says, faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. And when I realized that God was wanting me just to be willing and obedient and he would do the rest, I still can't preach. Amen. I'll be uh, uh, preaching. And now for 20 years, it was 20 years in, in, in uh, I think the 11th of January, uh, the Lord uh, that I... I announced my calling to preach. It'd be twenty years. It was twenty years this past uh, uh, January the eleventh, and I, I still can't preach without God. It, it's God that enables us, and it's God that gives us uh, that that that's needed. And I, I think about not not only just preaching, whatever God is leading you to do, Amen. And you may feel like, well, why well, I, I have I don't have much to offer. Now let's think about that for a minute. You think about when you come to the Lord, you didn't have much to offer, but God had so much to offer you. You think about what we did bring to God. We brought Him our sin. We brought Him our baggage. We brought Him a life of, 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 of misery, but God give us the gift of eternal life, the gift of salvation, the the. the I'm thankful that when He washed us in His blood and made us a fit subject for the kingdom of heaven, He put a robe of righteousness on us that we wouldn't wear Him before that we come to the Lord. And let me say, He found me, I didn't find Him. Amen. A lot of people say, well, I found the Lord. You didn't find Him. You were not even looking for Him. But He came looking for you and He found you and He found me. Amen. And, and so when we think about how the Lord made us who we are, think about what, what Paul said, a murderer, he, he, a man that, that persecuted the Christians, amen, thought he was doing the Lord justice, but the Lord saved him, changed his life, changed his way, and changed his message, changed his demeanor, changed his purpose in life. Not only, uh, no more was he... No more was he persecuting the, the church, but he was, he was uh, lifting up the church and lifting up the name of Jesus. He was preaching to the Gentiles, adding to the church instead of killing the church. Amen? I, we can look at it like this. If we're not led by the Lord, we can 
We can kill the church. We can do more harm than good. But if we'll allow God to take our little part and let him multiply it and let him bless it, that's the key behind it all. It's not me within myself that I can can preach and help people. (coughs) God knows what's needed. My words and my opinion can't help people. But when God anoints and God blesses whatever it is, whether it be a man of God preaching, whether it be a singer singing, whether it be a Sunday school teacher teaching, when God blesses it, it'll multiply. (coughs) Let me say tonight that we, a lot of times we, we focus on about we focus on the the things that are that are uh, <clears throat> that are uh, fleshly, that are carnal. We we think things uh, 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 through a carnal mind, but if we we'll look things look at things through a spiritual mind that and and allow God to use us, no matter what what it is. I think about to, of all down through the Word of God, the things that you know. Uh, uh, that God just just a little bit, you know. You think about the woman that came in and 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 she put two little mites in the in the offering there, and uh, there was no doubt many that came by that put in a whole lot more money of value in there. But but the Lord, He looked at what she gave. She give, they give of, the, of their, uh, of their uh, abundance there, but she give of her want. She give everything that she had, but she give it because she wanted to. Now, I thought about this about giving, no matter what it is. Giving your time, giving money. If your want to is not in it, if, if your heart is not in what you're doing, I believe God is not honored. But I believe when we put our heart, when our heart is in what we're doing, God will get glory and honor out of it. Amen? You've heard me say many times that that, uh, when we're singing, we need to be thinking about what we're singing about. If we're singing, uh, 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 Jesus loves me, we need to be thinking about how much Jesus loves us. And when our heart is in what we're singing, we will be more effective in what we're doing for the Lord. Amen. If we're not passionate about, uh, about seeing souls saved, amen, uh, uh, seeing folks come to the Lord and whatever we're doing, if we've lost that vision, we've lost sight of it all, haven't we? Amen. Because it's not uh, about us being seen or heard, but it's about the Lord being lifted up. And he said, if I'd be lifted up, I'd draw all men unto me. Amen. So I believe in, in God's lifelong lesson to us in this old flesh. It's not about me, but it's about him living inside of me. And it's about others seeing Jesus inside of me. Amen. So, you know, we we think about what the Bible says: "Let your light so shine, uh, so that others may see, uh, glorify God, the Father which is in us." And, and it's not about us being seen, but it's about the light of Christ, the light of Jesus Christ, being seen in our life. Because when He is seen, folks will want what you have. Amen. Folks will, folks will desire to have that, that, uh, that, that peace that you have. Um, the greatest thing can be said about anybody is, I see God. I feel God on that person. Uh, I, I, I feel the Lord in what they say. Uh, that, that is, that's something, that's the best thing anybody could ever say. Better than, boy, I like to... I like to hear them, hear them sing, or I like to hear him preach, or I like to hear him teach, or whatever. But, but more than that is, I feel God in what they're saying. Amen. I, 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 I'm getting fed by, 
by, by hearing them sing or getting fed by hearing them preach or I, I'm, I'm getting, uh, getting, getting something by their teaching and I feel the Lord. That, 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 if we focus on, on the, the, the preaching of the cross and the teaching of the cross, the singing of the cross, Amen. If we focus upon the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, I feel like that 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 a lot of times, and it's sad to say, but I believe that the church world we've lost the sight of the preaching of the cross. We've lost we've lost sight of the importance of souls being saved. Amen. Uh, that the that the gospel being being the, the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. But 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 instead, it's become about us and, and, and about our vision and about what we want to do in life, about what we want from God. But it's not about me. When we lose sight of us and start focusing our attention, our conversation, Amen. When our conversation is is not about us, but about Him. When when our behavior and our life is focused upon Him. Amen. God will get glory and honor out of our lives. But as long as it's about us. See, that, that's what it was there, uh, uh, the, the Tower of, of Babel there. It was all about them and them gaining more knowledge and wisdom. And it, and it was about their fame and, and about them being acknowledged and them having power. And it was all about them. And God said, I'll confound that. I'll confound that. I'll put that to naught. And, and let me say that the Word of God has put things to naught. We know right from wrong. No matter what the world's doing, no matter what they say is okay, we know what God says is right and what God says is wrong. So we're without an excuse not to be living right. Does that make sense? We're without an excuse not to be living right as though as we're ignorant of, of the truth. We should not be ignorant of the truth when we have the truth before us. The Word of God tells us things that are right and it also tells us things that are wrong. And I'm thankful we have the Spirit of God that's leading us and guiding us and directing us on things that are, that are right and are wrong. Amen. We have a standard to go by, don't we? And, and so the things that are, are foolish, and we, we feel we may feel so inadequate. And, and and I do within myself, but I know, and you've heard me say many a time before I preach, uh, in my prayer, I say, Lord, get me out of the way and you have your right. Because I know I can't help nobody. But I can when he's in control. I can when he's speaking through me. And you can't, you may feel like you can't help nobody, but you can through through the Lord. Amen. You can when the Lord gives you words to say, when the Lord gives you leadership. No matter what, you don't have to be a preacher for, for God to, to use you. Amen. When you're saved, you've got to be saved for God to use you. And when you're saved, no matter what it is, and everybody's got an office to do, everybody's got a work to do for the Lord. And whatever it is, Amen. I believe we need to do it wholeheartedly as unto the Lord. Not, in, not to be seen unto men, but by the Bible says, Whatsoever thou doest, do it wholeheartedly as unto the Lord. Give it all you got. As that woman with two mites, she gave all she had. And she gave more than all she had was money. She gave all she had from her heart too, right? The little boy, he gave all, all the lunch he had. He gave all he had. And I believe as God's people, we need to finish well. We need to finish well. Give it all we've got. Amen. Give God all you've got. You think about the rich young ruler there. He, he, he said, uh, uh, "What Master, what good things should I do uh, to inherit eternal life? And, and, and the Lord said, uh, I keep the commandments. He thought, well, I've... Uh, he justified himself right there. He said, well, I've kept all these from my youth up. What lack I? And the Lord said, if thou be perfect, then go sell all that thou hast and give to the poor and come follow me. That man went away sorrowful because he had many possessions. He wasn't willing to give it all up to follow Christ. And let me say tonight, we have to be willing to give it all up, give, give, give 
whatever we're esteeming highly, we've got to give it all up and put the Lord first in our life. And, and the devil would love nothing more to think, make you think that what you're giving up is more valuable than what you're receiving. What you're giving up is, uh, let me say, materialistic things. And what, what you're giving up is, is, is uh, carnal uh, uh, things. And what you're giving up is a life of sin. But what you're gaining is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. What you're gaining is peace and joy, life worth living, a purpose-filled life instead of a life of misery. And let me say, we all lived that life of misery before we uh, uh, accepted the Lord as our Savior. Amen. But let's give Him all we've got tonight. Let's give Him all we... Let's finish well uh, and, and make a difference in this life while we live. Amen. That's the message tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your Word. Help us, Lord. And I pray that You'd challenge us all tonight. Lord, to be used of you. And Lord, to just take our little part and to be used by you. Whatever that, 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 we, that you have blessed us with, the talents, and I believe all the gifts and the talents, Lord, it comes from you. Ever good gift, never perfect gift cometh from above. Cometh from, down from a Father of lights whom, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And I'm thankful tonight, what, Lord, what... What is good, it comes from you. And Lord, help us to take what you've given us and Lord, use it for your glory and your honor, just like the talents. Lord, we love you, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We appreciate the Lord, appreciate the word of God. Appreciate you tuning in. I pray that you have a good week. Uh, appreciate everyone that's helped in the music and the singing, the sound and uh, the video, and uh, appreciate all, everybody that helps make this possible. I uh, pray, pray you have a good week. Uh, good night. God bless you.